Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 165. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation, let's join together and thank our sponsor, LegalZoom, as they make our daily show possible. Support Entrepreneur on Fire and protect your business all at the same time by going to LegalZoom.com, finding the right services for you, and entering FIRE in the referral box at checkout. Okay, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Jim Kukral. Jim, are you prepared to ignite? I am extremely prepared. All right, that's great news. Jim is a 16-year internet marketing professional who was recently named as one of the most influential small business people on Twitter by Dun & Bradstreet. Jim also serves as a program faculty member for the University of San Francisco's internet marketing program, where he teaches classes to students around the globe on the topics of internet marketing, entrepreneurship, and social media. Given Fire Nation a little overview, Jim, but why don't you take a minute, tell us about yourself. We want to get to know you personally. And then tell us about what you have going on right now in the world. You know, I'm a regular guy from Cleveland, Ohio, with a family who lives a lifestyle business. And I own a bunch of different web businesses. I've bought and sold a bunch of different web businesses. And now I write a lot of books and uh, publish and help authors figure out how to publish books. And I have a video company. And I live uh, a lifestyle business, which is something that I think probably a lot of the people who are listening to this would like to have as well, which is where you build a lifestyle that you want and then you build a business around it. And, you know, it sometimes it takes time, but that's what I do. I love that word lifestyle business. And Jim, we're going to delve into that more later on in the interview. But before we do, we love starting Entrepreneur on Fire Off with a success quote. It gets that motivational ball rolling, gets people fired up for the content that you're going to be sharing with us. So take it away. All right, here it is. Doers get what they want, and everyone else gets what they get. And by that I mean, if you want to be successful in your life and in your business, you have to go out and make things happen and try. And especially when we're talking about this huge, immense opportunity you have in front of you using the power of the internet to build a brand, to build a business. If you are a doer, you can get everything that you want in life and business and career. If you're just going to be like everyone else, you're going to get what other people give you. So doers get what they want. Everyone else, they get what they get. I love that. And we're going to just dive into even more of how you did that, how you were actually taking action and building this lifestyle business that you now have. And Fire Nation listeners know that myself with Entrepreneur on Fire, I took strong action and have done over 165 interviews now that are generating over 150,000 unique downloads every single month in over 140 countries. So Fire Nation, you just need to listen to these words of wisdom that Jim is going to be imparting onto us is that doers get what they want. Everyone else gets what they get. I love that. Let's transition now into our first real topic, Jim, which is failure, which are challenges and obstacles that as entrepreneurs, we face every single day on certain levels. But take us back to a time in your journey when you really failed, when you were in despair or just you were up against an obstacle or a challenge that you really had to dig deep to overcome. And how did you overcome that? Well, I'll tell you the story that is really kind of a signature moment for me. I've I think everybody in their life has that signa- well, a couple, at, at least one signature moment, and it was about five years ago. And I've been doing internet marketing for 16 years now, but about five years ago, I was sitting at my desk right where I'm sitting right now, and I was on a phone call just like this with a client, and all of a sudden, I started to get dizzy, and I felt my heart beating uh, like crazy, and I thought I was going to pass out, and I said to my client, I have to go, something's wrong. And I hung up the phone. And in the next two to three minutes, I became so overwhelmed with my heart feeling like it was pumping out of my chest and my head was about to explode and I thought I was going to die. And 
of course, what I did was I went to Google, which is what you shouldn't do, and put in my symptoms and, you know, tried to see if I was having a heart attack or not. And uh, long story short, I recovered from that that day, went to the doctor the next day. A um, couple days later, doctor called me in and he sat me down. He said, he pointed to my head, he pointed to my heart. And he said, Jim, you don't have a problem here pointing to your heart. He goes, you have a problem here. And he pointed to my head. Wow. And it was at that moment that I realized that I had had my first anxiety attack or panic attack. And I probably think that there's a couple of people in here who are listening to this, if not more than a couple who have had the same exact thing that having the first panic attack of your life is the most frightening one because you don't know what it is and you've never had it before. So what I realized was on the way home from that doctor's office was that I had given up all the things in my life that I really love to do. Like I love to go fishing when I was a kid and I, I love to spend more time with my family. I've, I have young children and I realized that I was doing working too hard on things I didn't like to do, uh, making decent money, but was wasting away all of the things that I really wanted to accomplish in my life. Remember, this is your life, hopefully, is not your complete business. Your life, what do you want to do in your life? And I had to reassess my, my situation at that point. And that's when I decided I was going to change my lifestyle. And I built a lifestyle that I wanted and then started putting the pieces together of putting the businesses that support that lifestyle around it. So that was my big um, challenging moment was trying to actually change your life. Well, you just did an incredible job taking us to that room when you were starting to get dizzy. You are right. Many listeners, including myself, have experienced that panic attack, and we know just how scary it is. Being an officer in the Army for four years, especially during my deployment in Iraq, I definitely had those moments. And I'm sure. Again, in law school, I mean, you get overwhelmed sometimes, and you probably go through these mini little panic attacks almost on a daily basis. So, Jim, what steps did you take from that point that turned that challenge you were facing and turn it into the lifestyle business you now have? Well, the first thing I did is I went straight to the a fishing store and bought all new fishing equipment. Yeah. Right? So, And I made a commitment to myself that I was going to spend more time doing that in my life because that's something that I enjoyed doing when I was a child and it's something now that I love. So I, ch- I, I made an, uh, an effort to do that. You got to make change, right? The second part of that was I have you know years and years and years of internet marketing experience and sales experience and all of that, and I had to go out and and take all the things that I've learned and turn them into uh, businesses that would work to support that lifestyle. You know, I I didn't want to work eighty hours a week. I want to work forty hours a week. Right. You know, so you have to. You, yeah, this is where I always start when I help people with this type of thing. I say you have to decide what you want. And, and everyone's like, well, of course, I, Jim, I just want to work an hour a day. And <laughs> you're right. You know, and then they, they go into that whole four hour work week thing with, with I'm sure you've had Tim Ferriss on the show. Correct. So, so, you know, the four hour work week is, is kind of disingenuous in the fact that it's, it's really hard to get to that four hour one, but it is possible in reality to get to that 20, 30, 40 hour week and still make really good money and live the lifestyle that you want. You, you know, so, so, you have to just make the change and you have to start building businesses and processes in place that allow you to accomplish all those other things. I like to go fishing a lot during the week. So, you know, I may take off three hours this afternoon and go fishing. I have built processes and businesses in place that allow me to be able to do that. And it's just a matter of setting those priorities and building those processes, just like Tim says in his book. Absolutely. Now, Jim, when you actually, that day, went and bought all that fishing equipment, did you get home that night and Netflix, A River Runs Through It? <laughs> no, I didn't watch that one, but that is a good movie. <laughs> some, some nice trout in there. That's what I was just picturing, you just being like, I'm going to buy some fishing equipment. And you got all fired up by watching A River Runs Through It. Pretty similar to what I seem to try to do every weekend with Aspen Extreme when I'm going skiing. Oh, great. So, Jim, that's a great failure slash challenge and obstacle that you were able to overcome. Thank you for taking us through that. And let's go to the other end of the spectrum now, and that's the aha moment. You've obviously shared some aha moments that you've had through that failure, through that challenge, 
But one thing as entrepreneurs, we're always having these great aha moments, sometimes small, sometimes large, sometimes they don't work, they take us nowhere. But every now and then, we do have that big light bulb that goes off, the clouds part, the sun just shines through. Take us back to a time in your journey, Jim, when you had an aha moment, and how'd you turn that into success? I've had uh, hundreds and hundreds of these over the years. You know, I'm trying to think of what the best one is. It's probably when you realize that you need to be your own self and stop doing, trying to mimic the success of everyone else. Um, Because of the industry that I'm in, I work with a lot of people who are very successful. Some people in their teens and you know who make a lot of money the internet marketing affiliate marketing business and it's very very easy to get caught up in seeing what other people are doing and trying to mimic or emulate their success the problem with that is is when you try to copy or do something that somebody else has done just because you see them see it working for them you go down a path where you're creating businesses and creating a lifestyle that is not a fit for you. So the big aha moment I had, and it took years to figure this out, was that you have to be authentic to yourself and you have to stick with what you are really passionate and interested. It's all cliche stuff, but it's so true. Figure out what makes you tick and what you love and you have to stick with it and build your own plan. Sure, you can learn from other people and Look at their successes and failures and and adopt from those things. But don't try to be somebody else. Just try to go out and do your own thing. You know, the greatest thing about the power of the internet is that you can build a business or a brand in out of nothing compared to what you used to have before the internet. It would take 10, 20, 30 years to build a brand to be successful, millions of dollars in advertising, to be successful before the internet. Now you can be somebody like you who can come up with this great show, Entrepreneur on Fire, and come out and put the hustle and the effort in and turn this into, you're going to probably turn this into books and, and you got a top 10 podcast and so many things you can do with this if you just put the little effort in and you did it because you love it and you feel confident about it. So, so just be authentic to yourself and, and move forward. Wow, Jim, that was great. I'm fired up right now. All right. When did you actually try to copy something that didn't work out? Like you just were talking about, you see people trying to copy others that are having some success in the internet world. When did you do that and how did that not work out? I've done it a million times. You know, like one small example is back in the, you know, back about six, seven years ago, people were making a ton of money uh, by putting Google advertisements on their websites. So they yeah. would go out, they'd create, you know, these, these websites. And so I said, I, I went out and I saw that the, the RFID chips, people were bidding uh, like, you know, 10, 20, $30 for clicks. So I'm like, I'll build a blog about RFID chips and I'll put Google ads on my site and I'll write content every day about RFID chips and I'll make a ton of money. Well, it was great for the first 30 days until I realized I could care less about RFID chips. And, you know, and I wasn't going to create content for it, you know, and the whole thing completely failed. So, I mean, I can give you a million examples of me doing something like that where I followed what other people were doing instead of sticking to what I was actually interested in. I love how you brought up the word authentic self because that's something I always go to with Entrepreneur on Fire is when you are really living in your own body and living within your authentic self, your passions are there, the content is going to come, the desire is going to be obvious, you're just going to exude passion, you're going to exude confidence. What is your most authentic self, Jim? Uh, my authentic self is just the guy who is fair and um, prices things right and, and helps people. I, you know, I grew up, my mother was a school teacher, English teacher. My father was an electrician for General Motors, blue collar family. Um, you know, I didn't, you know, didn't want for anything, but certainly had to work my butt off to get where I'm at. And um, I just realized that I love teaching and helping people, you know. So I focus on creating businesses and services and products that really help people accomplish what they need to get done because that makes me feel good. And when I come to work every single day, which is me in my office here, which is for you know, over 10 years, I, I feel good about myself and, and that makes me 
happy to be here because you know they always say if it's if you if you're going to work and you don't like it it's you know it's a it's a you know it's a job I, I screwed that I screwed that quote up but you get what I meant <laughs> Jim have you had an I've made it moment yeah actually I did I just passed 10 years um, of being completely on my own where my wife uh, my 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 wife, uh, when they had her first child, she decided she was going to quit her high-paying executive job, advertising job, and she has not worked a day in over 10 years. Um, and I have passed 10 years of supporting my family um, without a J-O-B, completely on my own as an entrepreneur. And uh, I think that's a pretty nice milestone. Wow, that's a great milestone. I love your use of the word milestone because... Every interviewee that I have, every one of my guests looks at this question differently. Some say, John, I will never have an I've made it moment because that will denote the end of my journey. While others say, John, I have an I've made it moment every single day. And for me, it always does go back to that journey. Are you enjoying the journey that you set out for yourself? Are you appreciating those milestones, those accomplishments, those achievements that you're hitting along the way? And it's so obvious that you are, Jim, with your last statement, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. Are you enjoying the journey? Absolutely. You know, this goes back to the whole lifestyle thing. I have an 11-year-old and a uh, seven-year-old. And... I decided a long time ago, once the kids, you know, started having children, that I wanted to be there for them, and that's part of my lifestyle. Remember, I talked about the panic attacks, and I go to every baseball game. I coach my daughter's softball team. I coach my son's football flag football teams. I go to every event. I'm at every fundraiser. I'm there every single night. Um, I can't. I could travel more. I have friends who write books who travel three weeks out of the month but they don't see their kids. I made a conscious decision that I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be with my family. And if that means that I don't make millions of dollars, then I really don't care about it. I really don't care about making millions of dollars. Um, it's, it's that I made it is because I'm able to support my family and go fishing and be with my family. And, and that's what I decided I wanted. And it comes back to being your authentic self. Yes, so, Jim, you have a lot of exciting things going on in your business right now. Take a few minutes and share that with Fire Nation. We want to get to know about you and your business. I do a lot of things. I'm one of those guys who's got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of balls um, in the air. Yeah, a lot of balls in the air. So the, 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 the funnest one that I have right now is actually a video production firm called FunnerVids.com. Yes. And it, yeah, it's, you know, ever see those... Uh, ever go to the front of somebody's website and they got that 60 or 90 second video on the front of their website where the animation comes out and it talks about what they do? I have it on my my website. It was one of the first things I did. I love it. Right. They're they're called explainer videos or sales video demos. And basically the industry of creating videos like that for very high-end videos can cost twenty to thirty thousand dollars to have really beautiful, nicely made videos done. What I've done is I've got this business where I can make videos for about a thousand bucks that accomplish the same goal. Now I combine that with my 16 years of internet marketing experience to make a video that's going to actually convert and get people to you know buy your book, download, or or whatever it is that you you offer. So that's my that's my best thing I'm doing right now. People love it. They love it because the price point's right, and they love it because the videos are great, and it helps them improve their business. Again. My job is to help people improve their businesses and their brands. So that's my biggest thing. I got another thing that I'm doing called Author Marketing Club. If you've ever thought about writing a book or, or want to write a book, it's a site where I teach people. I got over 7,000 authors. We're, we're turning a year old next week. We got over 7,000 authors in the membership program where we teach them how to do book marketing and we give them tools on how to market their books and make money and become authors. So those two things right now are my main passions. And I love doing them every single day. Wow. Well, you are speaking to the right audience for this because, man, I knew the power of the explainer video. And I wish I knew about Funner Vids when I started because my price point was about four times that $1,000. And I've seen the Funner Vids that you produce, and they are of equal, if not superior quality. Well, thank you. And also, I am in, I've just finished my first book, Podcast Launch, where I... I've written the whole entire book about how to launch a podcast from literally step A to Z with 15 video tutorials. But at this point, 
like most entrepreneurs who are publishing their first book, I'm clueless about the marketing aspects of it. So I'm really looking forward to checking out this author club. So these are just two completely applicable things to myself and Fire Nation in general. All right. Well, I'd love to see you over there. And and it's a free resource. We do have a paid membership coming soon after our year anniversary, but I'd say 90% of it's free. Beautiful. So Jim, what's your vision for the future? I'm not a guy who likes to set these really, really hard goals. I know that some most successful business people will say you must have those. Um, my goal is to be happy. I'll tell you number one, to be happy, to spend time with my family. Um, and for the future is to continue to do that. And But I, I do have some some goals that I've written down. Number one, I am writing a lot of books. I have uh, one traditionally published book and 10 self-published books. I did set a goal of having 30 to 35 books done in the next two to three years that I could sell on Amazon um, and other internet places as well, because those are evergreen. They last forever, right? Evergreen. So when you think about, you know, if you have 30 books and you can sell 10 copies a day, you know, you can, you can earn a nice little paycheck from that. So I'm thinking that as a long-term retirement plan. Hopefully, if I can get enough content up there, I can have something that, that can um, fund, fund my retirement when I get older. But the real, the, the real goal is to have fun and to be with my family. The author annuity plan. I like there that. There we go. Oh, that's great. I like oh, that. Oh, no, you're going to steal that from me. No, I, I, you totally can. <laughs> no, my uncle, one of the wisest words he ever imparted upon me is be humble, be happy. And those two phrases just really resonate with me on a daily basis. So it's great to hear they resonate with you as well. Let's take a moment and thank our sponsor, LegalZoom. Fire Nation, are you waiting for the perfect time to start your dream business? That time is now. LegalZoom and Entrepreneur on Fire have partnered up to make sure you get started right. Whether you're setting up an LLC, S Corp, sole proprietorship, nonprofit, trademarks, or copyrights, LegalZoom takes care of you from start to finish. Their award winning service was developed by the best legal minds in the country, and every business gets personalized attention. One stat I love, Fire Nation, is that 90% of LegalZoom customers would recommend the service to their family. There is a disclaimer to know, guys. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but they can connect you to an attorney and provide self-help services at your specific direction. Let's sum this up. If you're an entrepreneur and want to ensure you are protecting your business, call or visit LegalZoom.com and protect what's yours. Make sure to enter FIRE in the referral box at checkout for additional savings. So Jim, we've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning round. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions. And you come back at us, FIRE Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Does that sound like a plan? That sounds like a lot of pressure. (laughs) Don't have a panic attack on me. This is just for fun. No, I'm done with those. No more. (laughs) What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Everyone's going to give the same answer here, but it, it's the, it was the fear, right? You know, it was the fear of, of getting what you want. It was the fear of failing. And the only way to be successful as an entrepreneur is to find a way to overcome that fear. Um, the good news is, is that because the power of the internet and the power of everything that you have at your fingertips today, it's so inexpensive and it's so uh, easy to do. If you can just figure things out and put a little hustle in and a little time – you can overcome it easily, but you just you have to be a doer, like I mentioned in the beginning. You got to get over it and just get going. What is the best business advice you've ever received? No one to shut up when the customer says yes. So when you sell consulting or when you sell products and services and you get a customer that says, okay, stop talking. Because they, they want to buy at that moment. So just say, okay, where do I send the invoice? Or here's a pen to sign. Don't talk yourself out of a sale. Exactly. What's something that's working for you right now? Well, the videos are working great. And uh, the automation is something that you know every inter- internet entrepreneur needs to focus on. But the, the, two, the basic core of my businesses revolve around this fact, which is that there are two reasons that people use the internet. One, to have a problem solved, and number two, to be entertained. You go to Google, 
to have a problem solved. You go to Facebook and YouTube and other places to be entertained, usually, okay? If you can understand and build businesses and services and products around those two facts, do you solve problems better than anyone else or do you entertain better than everyone else? You can be very successful. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with Fire Nation? Yeah, my favorite one, if you are um, uh, anyone who does a service business where you need to schedule appointments, my favorite tool out there is called Time Trade. I think it's like 20 bucks a year. And basically what it does is it's a really uh, cool way to do this. You put a little button or link on your website and people click on it. They go in, they look through your calendar, and pick a date and a time. They schedule an appointment with you, follow through the process, hit go. It sends an email to you, adds it to your calendar. And then when you get an email and then you, you, they give you their phone number and you call them on that day. It's a great way to schedule appointments because you can pre-set up the times in your calendar when you're going to be available. And it's a really impressive way. It really impresses clients when you use that. Wow. If you could recommend one book for Fire Nation, what would it be? Besides my book, Attention, This Book Will Make You Money, um, I would have to say Don't Make Me Think by Steve Krug. If you have not read this book, I believe it's 13 years old now at least, uh, but it is a thousand percent applicable as it was back then. It is the most uh, smartest book on internet um, business and usability that I've ever read. It will change the way that you think about how to build websites and content, and it still makes sense over 13, 13 years now. Wonderful. Well, we will link your book and that book, Don't Make Me Think, in the show notes. Jim, this next question is my favorite. It's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Well, uh, see if there's any rivers around and see if I could go fishing. Definitely. Um, you know, that's a really tough question because in that situation, I'm not sure I would be ready to jump into figuring out what business I'd, I'd want to create at that point. Um, I would probably uh, just relax a little bit and think, hey, all the pressure's off. Maybe I can just relax and uh, sit around and spend $500 just, uh, just having a couple drinks or something. <laughs> hey, that's a great answer for a lot of reasons, Jim. You have a clean slate, no responsibilities. Exactly. Your food and shelter is taken care of. Just sit back, relax, clear your head, and see what comes to you. But if I knew I needed to make money, and I always tell this to people who are younger who haven't started families yet, I, I didn't really become an entrepreneur until I was around 30, which is about the time I started a family. Um, if I would have become it much earlier, which I'm trying to push my kids into it, um, I, my answer would have been totally different, which would have been, you've got nothing to lose now. Now is the time to go out there and really try to make it happen because the pressures of life and everything are going to come down on you and it's going to be much harder. Jim, you've given us some great actionable advice this entire interview and we are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, then tell us where we can connect with you and then we'll say goodbye. All right, my uh, last piece of uh, advice here is if you want to be remarkable, you have to do something remarkable. There are so many things on the internet and so many businesses out there. If you want to be that remarkable person or create that remarkable pers uh, business, then you've got to come up with something that is remarkable. Halfway, half-ass, not great is not going to cut it in today's marketplace. Think about what problems you can solve better than everyone else. Think about how you can entertain someone something better than everyone else and make it remarkable. Because if it's not remarkable, it's going to be a thousand times more difficult to create a business around it and build a brand around. Uh, you can reach me uh, at jimkukrell.com. That's J-I-M-K-U-K-R-A-L.com. Got lots of free stuff on there. Um, and my business, funnervids.com. Uh, you can watch my videos and authormarketingclub.com. And I, everything's on jimkukrell.com if you want to check it out there. Wonderful, Fire Nation. Go check it out. The link to jimkukrell.com is going to be on entrepreneuronfire.com slash jimkukrell.com. 
Also, just go straight to his website. Check out Funner Vids. It's just a great way for explainer videos and everything he has going on. His book will be linked up on the show notes. Everything you've heard. Jim, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, your experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Fire Nation, I have an incredible opportunity for a select few of you. I have partnered with entrepreneur on fire sensation Woody Woodward and his publishing company. We are bringing together New York Times bestselling authors, including Tim Ferriss, Seth Godin, Barbara Corcoran, Gary Vaynerchuk, and others, and combining them with entrepreneurs just like you to form a book series titled Conversations with Visionary Entrepreneurs. This is an amazing opportunity to highlight your business and expertise in a way that will give you a competitive edge and position you as an expert in your chosen field. To find out more and to listen to Woody's in my conversation about the book opportunity, go to entrepreneuronfire.com slash author. That's entrepreneuronfire.com slash author. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.